Hi everybody, welcome inside the CrossFit Update Studios. Sean Woodland with Rory McKernan and Tommy Marquez breaking down day one of the individual events of the 2018 Reebok CrossFit Games Regionals. Before we get to that, let's just celebrate the fact that regionals are here. This is easily one of my favorite times of the year. I mean, it's one of our busiest, but the moments that come out of these three weeks of competition are fantastic and I love every minute of it. I mean, you're talking about epic comebacks, mm -hmm. you're talking dark horses showing up and making a name for themselves, some familiar names maybe having to climb out of some holes. Some of our favorite moments from the season come from regionals, including seeing some people realize their dream of becoming a CrossFit Games athlete. Yeah. Right, and, and this is the anything can happen time of year in the CrossFit Games season. Plus, we get to uncover these amazing events that, you know, we've seen people hitting things in the open. Now they've got to come and be in front of the lights and the camera yeah. and the action, and they got to do it when the pressure's on. Yeah, two events kicking off Day number one, two very different events. We'll start with a really long one that we saw at the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. We'll get into that here in just a second. And then the second event, we roll out the barbells. It's Linda, the three bars of death. So right off the bat here on Friday, I mean, these athletes are getting pushed to their limits and probably beyond with oh, these first yeah. two events. Dude, I love it. Forget what you thought you knew mm -hmm. about regionals programming. Everything's flipped the script now. You know, previously we had not seen anything past 26 minutes. We're going almost an hour. We're going to just put people on the treadmill for that long. Uh, and then you've got a triplet on the on the the barbell, one of my favorite workouts or events of all time. Fantastic. We're going to see uh, Linda in action. It's perfect first day. And, and just look how different they are. I mean, first you have a classic CrossFit benchmark. If you don't do your homework and you know test out these benchmarks regularly. What are you doing at this yeah. point of the game? <laughs> and, and you said the longest workout ever. Well, probably just one piece of that first event is going to be the longest event we've ever seen at regionals, just from that time cap alone. So, I mean, what a great way to kick off the weekend. Yeah, event number one, let's get into it. It is the triple three, 3,000 meters on the rower, then 300 double unders, and then a three mile run. Only this time, we are putting the athletes on an air runner. It will be not be outside like we saw at the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. And this is the first time now that we've seen an event that we first saw at the CrossFit Games now filter into the regionals. Yeah, the level of athlete is consistently rising and now we're expecting what the athletes had to do at the CrossFit Games just a few years ago. Now the athletes at the regionals have to do, and we are truly this year, more than ever, going to see only the best athletes advance to the Games. Yeah, and it's pretty cool that you mentioned this is the longest event ever in regionals. Well, just the air runner by itself, depending on what most people run, is <laughs> yeah. going to be the longest mm -hmm. event at regionals just as a singular portion oh. of, of, right. of this. So uh, I think this is going to catch a lot of people off guard. There are some athletes in the field who did this event back in 2014 at the CrossFit Games, but the vast majority have not. If you are one of those newbies, so to speak, how do you prepare for what you're facing here in event number one. I, I'm, I'm gonna twist that only slightly to say that I don't really think that anyone has ever done this event because back at the CrossFit Games when you did the triple three in 2014, there was no air runner. Given you were outside, it brings its own difficulties. There were hills, there was sunshine, it was and it was hot. But this thing is completely different. And if you haven't felt that stimulus of doing an event on that thing, you, you really need to go and find one, especially if, uh, if you don't usually have access to one. Seek one out and practice on it, because if you haven't, you're going to be very unpleasantly surprised once you get into this first event. If you are one of the few athletes who was able to do this event back in 2014, what are the keys for you? Well, I think one advantage that they have is knowing what it's like to get through the row in the double unders with game day intensity, right? Knowing once the, the clock starts and your heart rate goes through the roof, how to kind of modulate a little bit so you don't fall into the trap before the run. Because we saw the run wreck people. Yeah. And we saw how just monotonous a three mile run can get for the athletes. So knowing how that is, map out your splits, know exactly how much you need to get with every 20 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever it is for you guys, so you can Check your watch, check the screen, do something so you just don't feel like a hamster on the wheel <laughs> for 30 minutes bring, or however bring long it's going to take. Bring, bring something to listen to. That's the worst when you're looking and it's just not turning around. Just listen to the Pat and Row Show podcast. It's a great <laughs> time you. to knock right. that out. You know, if you have the opportunity to, to uh, do that on, on the Air Runner, that's a Back fabulous a time to just get lost uh, in a podcast. So let's talk event <laughs> records here. And, and I'm going to caveat this by saying, look, we all know Matt Frazier is going to crush the majority of these events. So let's take him out of the conversation How for now. <laughs> Who do you think for the men and the women has a chance of setting the event record for number one. All right, well, Voldemort's out of the question, but <laughs> I, I still think that he, he was relevant to my answer because, of course, his name sprung to mind when I thought of this event. And so I looked at, at past historical things that have happened first at regionals because that's the only place we've seen an assault runner. They haven't been at the CrossFit Games. Um, he did well on, the, on them there, but a man named Josh Bridges also did fantastic. And as we all know, Josh also has a very deep and rich history with events that have uh, high uh, 
with events that have lots of running in them all the way back to 2011. He's done well on these things. So I'm going to give Josh a mulligan for last year. He, he had a little bit of an off year, fair. but he had a, a win in the Murph that he did compete in. He's done fantastic on, on tons of other events that's similar to this one. So Bridges is my easy pick. I what about the women? I think on the women, Kristen Holter won this event when it was at the games in 2014. I think with Sam Briggs out, she's the clear cut favorite in the Meridian, but or in Europe, excuse me, but I think one woman who can give her a run for her money on this particular event is Christy Aramo. Mm. You look at how well she's done in running events in the past. I mean, second in the run, swim, run last year, second only to the fittest woman on earth in a massive foot race at the end. Then you look at how well she did third at the ranch trail run just two years ago. She has a background in endurance sports, doing triathlons of that nature. I think if there's one athlete that's mentally prepared to just kind of plug away on the air runner, I think it's Chrissy Aram. The, the one thing that we have to say though too with an, an event like this is that you always have these dark horses too. That's so true. I found old uh, Nathan Pontius who lists a 15, 15, 5K, a 628 Helen, <laughs> and a 52 second 400 meters. So this would never happen at the games, but okay. at regionals, there's an opportunity for some dark horse to come out of nowhere. I, will, look, I look forward to seeing that. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll, be, uh, that'll be fun to watch. Let's get into event two. We are rolling out the barbell it is Linda, the three bars of death. We go from 10 down to one by ones, deadlifts, bench press, and squat cleans. It's a 17 minute time cap and the weight is fixed. Usually Linda is based on your body weight, but all the athletes will be doing the exact same weight on the competition floor. And this really continues a tradition that we've seen evolve the past couple of years at regionals where benchmarks start to show up in competition. And don't just show up, show up on day number one. Mm -hmm. Remember just two years ago, we had regional Nate show up with strict muscle ups at regionals the year before that, Tommy V. And we took a break last year to have some dumbbell fun. You know, we got that out of the way. <laughs> but now we're back and not just any benchmark, but the three bars of death, something that just crushes people in the past. Some of my favorite YouTube videos from the early <laughs> days of CrossFit. Yeah. So I, I'm really excited to see how this plays out. Yeah, absolutely. The, the dumbbells were fun and they were cool and I get it, but I love the barbell. And, and this one of all, you know, it's, it's an example that they use in the CrossFit Level 1 seminar. Uh, about, you know, can anybody think of a triplet that has only weightlifting? Well, here it is. And, and it's, a, it's really fun to watch and to see athletes of this caliber do it at a fixed weight would be, can't wait. And if the majority of athletes who are going to regionals have not done this event already, like, I don't know what you're doing, but what are the keys <laughs> now to event number two? You know, Sean, there's three bars of death here. I think only <laughs> one bar is the key to this event. I think it's the bench press, the one that's probably going to get the most hubbub about it from everyone talking on social media. Uh, normally, bench press is something that's relegated to a strength portion before a Metcon or just a bro sesh on a Saturday when the sun's out, throw your shades on, get a good pump. But now you have to do it with intensity, with you know the taxation of the other movements. I think for most athletes, the, the deadlift and the clean aren't that much of a problem. But bench pressing under fatigue, especially when you have other people breathing down your neck, could be really be the key here. I think at regionals you're going to see the, the cotton allergy, you know, rear its ugly head as people are bench pressing, shirts will come off. Uh, no, <laughs> the, the, the bench press more than anything is similar to like the handstand push up. Once you fail, you fail and you're not going to come back from that. So I think athletes need to keep that in mind. I think they also need to be aggressive with the pace at the start of the event. So for the 10, 9, 8, people might have the, the thought that they need to overpace that. That would be a mistake in my opinion. I think you need to hit those early rounds because you can't make up a lot of ground. Once you get down into five, four, three, two, and one, those go quick. The athletes who loved event number one are not happy here and vice versa. <laughs> who are the athletes that you're looking at? And remember, we, yes, Matt Fraser. we're gonna put him aside for now, but who are the athletes who you think smashed this thing? Well, there's a Haas that immediately comes to mind uh, <laughs> out of the Central Regional, and that's Nick Uranker, one of the best in the sport when it comes to just the pure barbell strength. I mean, the deadlift is going to be easy. He's got a 555 deadlift. The clean's going to be nothing. He cleaned and jerks 396. He actually had a, a workout on Instagram the other day where he was doing an EMOM for 20 minutes, a bench press is like seven at 205 and just repping them out over the course of that 20 minutes. In total, I think he did 70. So 70 at 205 means 55 at 195 isn't gonna be a problem for him. You don't do, that's not your, your rep scheme? <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the ladies side, I had, I had a hard time initially. I, I looked at DT, both double and heavy, to think, okay, well, who's cycling a barbell quickly? Who, who's gonna do well at this? And of course, that led me to the daughters, but I thought maybe the deadlift would be harder for Katrin in, in this rep scheme. Uh, we're going below parallel, so maybe Cara Saunders is going to do fantastic, but it all comes to the pressing for the women. 
And with that being said, I think Brooke Wells is your winner of this event. Uh, she does fantastic with the deadlift, as we know. She cleared the deadlift ladder of the 2016 games. She was second place in double DT, so she can move a moderately loaded barbell for a lot of reps. And uh, I actually found a couple videos of her doing bench press and even training with some specialists in powerlifting. So she knows what she's up yeah. to. And I, I think Brooke's gonna be a safe bet. Two events on day number one, two very different events. And if you're an athlete who is looking at this and you're thinking, man, I got to get ready to do this on Friday at regionals, what is going through your head right now? Well, what's happening in your stomach and your heart should tell <laughs> you whether or not you prepared correctly because there's nothing you can do at this point to gain the capacities that you need to excel at these two, like you said, very mm -hmm. different events. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, these are so different that the leaderboard we're gonna see at the end of day one is not the leaderboard that we're gonna see at the end of the weekend. Keep that in mind, uh, but it is kind of reminiscent of the trail run followed up by the deadlift ladder from Aromas in the 2016 mm -hmm. games where you see these two things on the opposite side of the spectrum, and we get a pretty cool picture. Yeah, I think we even get a better picture now with these two as well. Very polarizing events, just like we saw back in 2016. But I think with more movements included in, I think it does a little bit better job of checking off more yeah. boxes. So if we see a big name athlete at the top after these two events heading into the weekend, then things bode pretty well for them going forward. I have a guess on who that name might be. Voldemort. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So that is day one. We'll be back tomorrow to break down day two. And if it's anything like day one, it's going to be a blast to uh, sit up here and talk about. That is going to do it for us for today. For Tommy Marquez and Roy McKernan, I'm Sean Woodland. Back tomorrow with the events for day two of the 2018 Reebok CrossFit Games Regional.